You want me to tell you about a young boss moment? I don't want to leave it like a, oh, maybe this happened and maybe, no, his name is Philip. I don't remember his last name, but I can figure it out if we need to. And you can look up the case if you want to, so that people know that this is actually a true story. The point of this young boss moment is that sometimes you do what you got to do. This is a good young boss story, I think, because I, I had the choice of continuing to fight them because I, I could, I, I believe I was right, or I could simply end it and no longer put my employees at risk and take the embarrassment, take the blame, take the cross and put it on my back and let the, the, the whipping be done to the punishment and the whipping, you know, be done to me rather than to my people. Five years ago, maybe more, maybe seven years ago now, we were moving from one building to the next. We had totally changed our practice. We had stopped practicing criminal law. We'd stopped practicing family law. And we were only doing personal injury and we were doing really well. But we got a complaint from an old criminal client named Philip. Not really from Philip, but from his aunts. He had a girlfriend and, and he and this girlfriend had a baby. This girlfriend had, I guess, another baby as well. And he was watching both of them at the same time. And this child that was not his, uh, but very, very, very young, started to cry. And Philip took the child and slammed him into a marble um, countertop, bathroom countertop, over and over and over again until the child stopped crying. His first lawyer had him plead guilty. And the reason he had him plead guilty was because he wanted to get the guy 10 years in prison. That was a plea offer. He knew that if this thing went to trial, he'd probably get 20 years or life, maybe more. I mean, if they sell the, the medical records for this child, it would be forever. It should be forever. We, we get hired and we take the case over from the first lawyer, our, our law firm. And we hired an expert named Brooke Busby. And she did a great job. She was the, the best criminal defense lawyer I knew in Dallas uh, at the time. She was board certified, had done it for 40 years, and was an expert at criminal defense. In fact, she was also a professor uh, at the law school where I went to law school for my last year at SMU. We were doing our best and we were unsuccessful. We could not get the judge to allow us to get a new trial. It was difficult. I mean, he had already pled guilty. You know, it's not easy to get the plea withdrawn ever. And we couldn't do it. And the judge sentenced him to 20 years. Seven years later, I got a complaint from his aunt, from the Bar Association, saying that um, we had done a bad job on this case and that they should open an investigation. And they did. Even though the complaint was incoherent, and the complaint basically just said, I'm angry that my nephew is still in prison, but the bar had seen our name one too many times. We'd had family law and criminal law and personal injury. When you practice these practice areas, when you serve poor people, you will get complaints. They are poor, they are uneducated. They don't understand why they don't win. And so when they don't win, they complain. That's normal in family law. That's normal in criminal defense. But the truth is, we should have done a better job in the past. We only had 10,000 cases over 10 years, you know. Um, we should have done a better job of stopping these things from happening. Once these guys get involved and they're looking for something, they're going to find something, whether it's medicine or the law or anything else. Trust me, once they open those files up, they can find a mistake. If they're looking for a mistake, they'll find one. And they did. They found a mistake. We couldn't prove that we had the piece of paper that we needed to have and we couldn't. So I had two choices. They gave me an option, the bar. I could agree because it was a fairly minor thing. I could agree to take a class and do some extra continuing legal education um, and write a report saying that I now understand how the rules are important <laughs> and I'm sorry. Or I could fight the bar and maybe lose and lose my law license. 
And if I lost my law license, our entire law firm would have lost their jobs. There's a lot of people who depended on us for gas and groceries. It just was wrong. And it was much wiser to simply take the class, and I learned a lot. I read the books, I met with the lady, and I wrote the report, and frankly, I'm glad. I grew from it. So sometimes you do what you got to do, and, and you bite the bullet even though it doesn't taste good. And you drink that tea because it's what your people need you to do. And so I read the books, I took the class, and I wrote the report. And you know what? I learned a lot. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I got a lot out of it.